Good morning class. Welcome to full syllabus channel. Today we will be doing the next oxidizing agent that is ozone. First of all let's discuss what ozone do and its mechanism. Ozone basically do the oxidation of alkenes into fragments of aldehyde or ketones and sometimes acids. It is an electrophilic reagent as it is attacked by alkenes which are electron rich in nature which exactly shows that ozone will be electrophilic in nature. Now let's see the reaction which ozone undergo with alkenes. Ozone basically shows two kind of reaction. In this reaction I have only written the reductive way of ozonolysis in which aldehydes are formed okay there is one another way that is oxidative ozonolysis we will be discussing that in the further class now let's do the mechanism of ozonolysis first of all in ozonolysis as you know alkene has a pi bond which is electron rich in nature it will attack the terminal oxygen which in turn can uh, changes this pi bond and give the electron density of the pi bond to the oxygen bearing positive charge. This positive charge will now be removed and the negatively charged oxygen will attack the carbon which is positively charged and this kind of structure is formed which is called molo-ozonoid. Now there is a rearrangement that will be occurring and there will be a change in in the bonding and a carbonyl bond will be generated along with its COO negative molecule fragment will be generated. In the next step the O negative will attack the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen will be attacking the C that is having positive charge and a ozonoid will be formed. From molo ozonoid to ozonoid this is a single concerted step but to make you memorize everything, I have made these things in two steps. Now, as I was discussing earlier, there are two types of ozonolysis. If we are using zinc and water or Me2S that is dimethyl sulfide to break the ozonoid, it is called reductive ozonolysis. It will break the ozonoid into aldehydes. As you can clearly see, zinc will take this oxygen and ZNO will be released. And this will be forming RC double bond OH that will be RCHO and this also will be forming RCH double bond O. If instead of H this will be a R, a ketone will be formed. Now the second kind of ozonolysis is the oxidative one in which instead of zinc water or Me2S we are taking H2O2. It's an oxidizing agent to further the oxidation of the aldehydes. The product which we will getting from reductive ozonolysis will be oxidized. Hence instead of getting a aldehyde we are getting, getting two acids. Now let's solve some examples of ozonolysis. If I am taking this kind of a alkene that is a cycloalkene and treating it with ozone, what will be forming? I am forming the ozonoid directly, this carbon and this carbon. You will forget this double bond and ozone will be adding to it. So one oxygen will be adding here and two oxygens will be adding up here. So this kind of ozonoid will be formed. After you will be adding CH3-2S or zinc water this kind of breakage will be seen and you will get CHO here and CHO here as the product is shown. Now let's do another example in which you can see this is the alkene which is there. I have taken one side reductive ozonolysis and on the other side I have taken oxidative ozonolysis. In reductive ozonolysis I will get aldehydes as you can easily make if I will break this bond, one oxygen will be introduced here, one here and one here and you have to break this, right? So this will be forming CHO as here 
and this will be also forming CHO as formed here. And if I will be doing oxidative ozone lysis, what I will be getting is this CHO will be oxidizing to acid and this CHO will also be oxidizing to acids. So after forming reductive ozone lysis product, you can directly form oxidative ozone lysis product also with the help of it. So keep in mind what kind of reagent is given along with ozone it will determine the product you are forming is that clear class now let's do the next example as i told you if instead of h there will be a r group then reductive ozonolysis will give you a ketone and remember one more thing even if oxidative ozonolysis will be taking place here ketone won't get oxidized to an acid hence a ketone and an acid will be formed in oxidative one now let's do this case oxygen oxygen this double bond will not be there now this kind of ozonoid will be formed this will be cleaved this ketone is forming here and this kind of aldehyde is forming here if instead of reductive i am saying oxidative reagent will be there that is h2o2 then you will be getting this ketone plus this is ethanol right so ethanol will be converted to ethanoic acid and you will be getting an acid for the ozone as oxidizing agent reaction now this is little homework which I am giving you as an assignment try these questions and after trying these questions we will be discussing these questions in the next lecture before opening this video I want to discuss the last lectures questions which you have solved I think I am sure you must have solved the questions which I have given you in the last video so let's let's talk about this question first in this questions we are giving a per acid and two alkenes are there as we know the funda out of the two alkenes the alkene which is more electron rich will form the peroxide will form the epoxide this has one two and three attachments and this has only one and two attachments this clearly shows that this alkene is more electron rich hence the epoxide will be forming at that alkene only if one mole of per acid is used if two moles of per acid are, are used then both the both the bonds will be forming perox epoxide now in the next molecule it is a ketone for ketone you must be remembering that it will be converted to a ester as both the groups are symmetrical so you can introduce a oxygen and form a seven membered ring on any of the side in the next question it is a ketone again but now the two R groups are different this is a secondary carbon and this is a primary carbon and as you remember the ease of migration is that 2 degree carbon has more tendency to migrate than 1 degree carbon hence this carbon will be migrating and a oxygen will be introduced here now in the next question this is a question for sharpless epoxidation as you will be remembering by the oxidant as well as the catalyst we are using here D instead of writing minus or plus I have written D so because I want you to memorize it that D means minus DET now I will just rotate my molecule so that OH will come above the alkene so in this way I have rotated the molecule and now as you can see the OH is on the left left OH clearly means that with minus let's remember the formula first r plus w red and white red and white i suppose you remember this red plus white that clearly should means right oh will be wedge form if plus det is used right that means left oh will be plus and dash is that clear class 
and if I just convert it to minus that means right minus will be dash is that clear and left minus will be wedge so it is on the left minus d it is used hence I have to make a wedge epoxide as I have made in the structure now with this molecule which is not on the vertical the alkene is not on the vertical line so i will again rotate the molecule 90 degree and make the oh on the vertical line now as you can see the oh is on the left side and ldet means plus det now let's go back to the formula left plus the epoxide form b left plus and the epoxide form will be dash as formed here so in this lecture you will be clearing all your questions which i have asked you in the last lecture now i will be waiting for you in the next lecture with the solved answer for ozone lessons goodbye class